Void! Welcome back to another video. I huh? hope that you're having a nice day today, that you're moving to look at nature. Um, I did today. I was playing guitar in the morning and, um, I was very perceptive of the wind today. <laughs> I still can't believe that it's from pressure changing that basically is sucking and blowing <laughs> particles and that's what we call wind. I... I'm still shocked at that information. But yeah, I hope that you remember to look at nature. In this video, we're just going to continue working on the theories. Um, my hair is wet because I was in the bath. Oh, it's so cold today. So I hope that you are nice and warm, the void. I even got a blanket. Working on the void in the cold. Right back to where we started. Um... I've been thinking a lot about systems, actually, about open and closed systems, because I think a big problem that we have is that a lot of our systems are open, like they're just open systems. And I suppose what I mean by that is that there's no, there's nothing that balances it out. It just produces without an idea of when to stop. Um, whereas if you look in you know, nature, there's always a duality to everything. And it doesn't just produce without, you know, an idea of how much it needs to. There's always something that happens in the system that's... How do I describe this? Um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. I'm just going to check that it's recording, but yeah, I want to work on the concept of systems today. All right, we're all good. I just readjusted the lighting. Um, but yeah, open and close systems. I think I did, I did explore that a bit. Oh yes, <laughs> everything is poorly placed in space. It's so true, me. It's so inefficient. Okay, but Human efficient design systems. The ability to predict and change outcomes from the understanding of systems from the necessity for greater control over the natural world. A system is the fluctuation of dualities in time. The more complex a system, the more compounding dualities are forming its outcomes. All right. Um, so even when I think of like any system, choose any system, <laughs> I think it's just part of, not to drop the C word, but I think it's part of capitalism that it's an open system. Like that's supposed to be the idea of the free market is that we'll produce what we need, I believe. Let's have a look. What is the free market? Is this is a political episode. Oh, an economic system in which prices are determined by unrestricted competition between privately owned businesses. In economics, a free market is an economic system in which the prices of goods and services are determined by supply and demand. Expressed by sellers and buyers, such markets as modeled operate without the intervention of government or any other external authority. Interesting. So their duality is, or I should say ours. <laughs> this is what we're, this is what we're busy with. You know, I was thinking about it today, and I was like, it's so sad how hard we are on ourselves because, you know, out of all the creatures, they don't have to produce societies. They don't actually have to. They can't fail <laughs> at, you know, making a, a house. I mean, I guess they can, but ours is so complicated. Like what we have to achieve, and we have somewhat of which something <laughs> it doesn't have its problems yes of course but i mean we're still learning and um it's definitely interesting that we can create conceptual systems that spawn objects in reality or position things differently or mobilize people in a certain way it's it's fascinating to me and i'm proud of us for 
what we've made. It's not perfect, but we're trying our best. And I wish we would wouldn't be so hard on ourselves. <laughs> and like, I guess when 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 you say like this is a system is horrible. I mean, I've been there. But when you say stuff like that, you're basically the people who actually see the potential in it and see the outcome as not all bad will then say like no it's perfect <laughs> it's clearly not perfect but you know by criticizing it they become defensive of it and then we don't change it from either side and then we just become more polarized and it's like okay but now people are literally homeless <laughs> like we need to address the system Okay, private uh, business owners fully control supply and demand, take decisions based on changing client preferences and market conditions, decide production variables, trade contracts with one another. It's basically like... open competition you see this is literally an inefficiency to me i'm like why do we need two of the same next to each other how much space is that using for the same thing <laughs> that's exactly the same thing do we not see that that's like somewhat of a strange use of our space and our time because now these two people are stressed because now there's a scarcity of of hot dogs within the system and they both have to struggle to survive that's inherently putting stress into the making of how we should you know distribute things which is strange but like it really bothers me when i'm in supermarkets and next to a can of beans is like 20 cans of beans. It really, really bothers me. I'm like, do we not see how we're wasting time, space? It's weird. And it's the same product. Strange. <laughs> Anywho. Free market. Free, cooperative and peaceful process. It just lacks like okay what do we have now i need to look at the outcome the output of this thinking maybe i should write it down Motive of self-interest, freedom of choice, private property, competition, system of markets and prices, limited government. It's a very interesting idea. It really is, and it's it's definitely creating something. <laughs> um, Hmm. Absence of bureaucracy. I don't see that. What is sovereignty? Consumer sovereignty. Sovereignty. Oh. <laughs> we worship the money. <laughs> okay influence of free enterprise okay optimal allocation of resources optimal i don't know i don't know about that <laughs> what does that mean this view of it as well is like so strange like people are like the rich people just want us to starve i'm like i don't see that they're just also trying their best and it's very strange but there's like different economies going on there's like 
the poor people have their own food that they buy. The rich people have their own food that they buy. And it's so much more expensive. And so it eats away at the differences in... I suppose well, the output is supposed to be a better lifestyle. But they are also, like, really stressed. They're also really stressed. Because that's the thing about a system that is unfair. It's not fair for anybody. Um... Not that it didn't try to be, but it's gotten to the point where, you know, you don't choose which family you're born into and you can have an advantage from where you just happen to spawn in. And that's like against the idea of competition, you know, it's got so much luck involved in it, which is like, okay, so then it's just gambling what we've made, not, not really a competition. <laughs> Environmental concern, reduced social safety nets, prevalence of corruption. These ideas are so contradictory because it's like, it's like, yes, everyone will act in self-interest. And then it's like, oh no, people are acting in self-interest. And then they call it corruption. And I'm like, but that's like what you do in a competition. So like, it doesn't make sense. These ideas, they're so disjointed pure planned economy communism pure free market pure competition communism planned economy is there nowhere in between <laughs> oh i see it's then there's like a mixed one hmm Interesting. <laughs> what a what a cartoon. I love that. <laughs> it definitely feels that way, my guy. It feels that way. A metaphor for the unseen forces that move the free market economy. That's the thing, it's like there's so much there's so much unpredictability with this system as well and it's strange how things just go up and up in price like what's the conclusion here are we just going to start to pay a million rand for milk it's like okay but that's strange like regardless of whether people will earn you know 40 million rand <laughs> it's strange that the numbers are increasing like that it's a it's very absurd actually Supply and demand. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if this is what I see either. I do see everybody kind of struggling. Though I haven't met extremely, extremely rich people, so, you know, maybe they have a different kind of life, but... That occurs through natural conditions in the free market. And another thing, monopolization, because money compounds on itself. The time that you've invested into a foundation means that anyone who's trying, if you have a clothes store just because you made your clothes store first means that anyone who comes in after that it has somewhat of a disadvantage just because you had a, a head start <laughs> just from starting in time and then it's supposed to be like no but then the ones who are the best are going to overtake them, I guess. It's like a never-ending race. 
<laughs> He's like, no. Don't we just want to eat to like have babies? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> What's going on, you guys? Hmm. Command economy. And then we just have this whole aspect of like the things that are actually really unhealthy for us is winning. <laughs> so the things that we're demanding are like alcohol and porn and like, you know, drugs and all these things. And it's like, okay, like distraction. It's like, is this, is this really supply and demand? It feels, it doesn't feel, or it, I guess it assumes that we're just purely just rational things. Maybe it's very computery in that regard a system of economics where large entities compete to establish barriers of, to trade lobby government to help them and hurt other businesses <laughs> why are we hurting each other in business it's strange control a country's political outcomes through financing its politicians extract maximum profits from labor and other inputs what is this is this is this protest oh truthfully defined <laughs> okay let's start again knowing that this is this is someone roasting it a system of economics where large entities compete to establish barriers to trade lobby governments to help them yeah <laughs> and hurt other businesses yeah Control the country's political outcomes through financing its politicians. It does happen. Extract maximum profits from labor and other inputs. Yeah. Deceive customers about their products. Yeah, that does happen. <laughs> and prevent other businesses from getting started or otherwise competing. Yeah, why would you... If you're running a race, why would you look behind you and be like, Oh, hold on. They're, they're lagging behind. <laughs> no, that's not competition. That's not the idea of competition. A free markets. What's that? You just take stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Command economy. Interesting. There is le less economic freedom. Businesses do not have the freedom to make decisions about what to produce and how much to produce. The government can distort pricing signals which can lead to inefficiencies in the economy. The level of production is not always responsive to market demand. The government can be wasteful with resources. The government can ensure that there is full employment. The government can control inflation. Oh. The government can direct businesses to invest in certain sectors of the economy. Oh, this is like, I think this is what China is, isn't it? The government can develop specific industries. Hmm. This is so interesting that this is how we've we're setting up society is like just this weird um it's basically we literally are making it a game and it's like okay but it's, it's like life and death <laughs> for people it's so um it's so the perspective is just like, how does one person move around within systems like this? You know? What's it like to be inside of them? Instead of this top-down view of, the, of, like, the mechanics, I suppose. Reduction of market failure and to efficient 
Use of resources. To tap the preferences of the people. What do you mean, porn and alcohol? <laughs> oh, you filthy charts. Oh. This is a bit of laggy there. Power is unjustly skewed towards the government authorities. Yeah, that's another thing I think about. I'm like... But... People in government are just people. How are they supposed to be better then? I don't really understand that. High level of control over... You kind of freaked me out that my camera glitched there. <laughs> this is the FBI man. Did he come? Hello, please don't hurt me. High level of control over prices leads to shortages and surpluses. Shortages and surpluses. But that's what I see in general. Like, that's what what's happening. We... Like, even if we just look at the clothes system, we produce clothes without an idea of how many clothes we need. And so, then you have clothes wasted, and you don't even have a, a clothes system, closed clothes system, in that we recycle the clothes, or we do something with the fabric, or we collect it in a different way. Like, there's no completely closed system of clothes. <laughs> I should have chosen a different one. But, um, that's led to lots of waste, clothing waste from all countries. You know, giant piles of clothes, which means that either one of these are not producing efficiency. Do I see health as well? Not really. Neither one is producing health. Neither one is producing sanity. Everyone is a little bit insane. Lacks uh, life, lacks predictability, uh, moving away from your family. And as much as we focus on the freedom of choice, all I hear people talking about is the lack of choice in what they do with their time and their life. So, these concepts aren't living up to even their little bullet points. Not that he's not trying. <laughs> it's trying to. What do I want to make? Or design? <laughs> Free market is very open. Command is... It's still an open-ended system. There's people who control what is being placed where, but, like, I guess it has more statistics, though, I'm sure. They track more of, like, you know, like I said, everyone gets a job. That makes more sense, so you don't have to stress about that. But the fact that only a few people make the decisions, that's... That doesn't... Human beings need to be in the environment in order to problem solve. So, if you spend all of your time being a politician, how will your brain see the problems that it needs to solve? It doesn't make logical sense. And for it to be so centralized doesn't make any sense. Maybe if it was decentralized, Hmm. <laughs> Centrally planned economy. What is that? Centrally planned economy. <laughs> this stuff scares me. This is like this this symbol is so powerful. It's like, oh, <laughs> 
Oh, I don't think I'm allowed to look at that, actually. It's so naked. <laughs> Give me, like, a black and white version. Center around family or tribe. Oh, a traditional. This sounds better. It's just in a hunter-gatherer and nomad society. Trade relies heavily on barter. Produce only what you need. Surplus or leftovers are rare. They eventually evolve to form some form of currency for trade. Interesting. This is where we started. It really comes back to the concept of money. Something about money. Something about money. It doesn't have a duality. But what would that even be? Like the amount of money in the world just keeps getting more and more. <laughs> That's very weird. And then you get like this whole thing of like countries owing each other billions. That's really weird too. Like what does that even mean to the average person that is so absurd like it's so it's so hard to even comprehend what it means for countries to owe each other money um and it kind of cements us in in countries as well like how are we supposed to join into one humanity if if pieces of us is literally defined by how much we owe each other of an imaginary concept that we use for exchange so I suppose where I can start is to write down the outputs of the system because that's what those graphs or those charts were trying to say is that they were trying to say this is the output but I don't I see different outputs so I think I'm gonna write them down um, I suppose that's what I was doing though with, with this, the money system. No, oh, the food system is so broken. <laughs> um... Maybe just a brief summary of all of these. These, I suppose, are supposed to be the... The systems. They need dualities as well. Alright. First a break. <laughs> First a break. Alright, I'm back. And, um... Yeah, I've really been thinking about... Why? Why? Why do we? Why have we done this? <laughs> why have we designed it like this? Why is our idea of a system this entity that controls how it develops through the best things surviving from competition? <laughs> I think it's really just because of that's the idea of how we see life. We see this, that we're here, and that it's like a random thing <laughs> that's happened, and the strongest will survive. It's the survival of the fittest, the idea of evolution influencing how we understand systems, I think. It's very similar in the best surviving but I suppose that's the idea of competition so yeah let's there's also this idea of the best surviving that it's like but then there wouldn't be any problems like there wouldn't be any okay anyway <laughs> to get into that right now is a bit much let's just have a, let's just have a look um, oh, I was also thinking about, like, um, how do I say it?
the way that we have structured it so top down it's like our main goal is to grow i suppose but that's it's that's it like to grow and <laughs> like what because the way that we place things it has no awareness of how a person moves inside of it some some not not to an extreme extent like not as if it has no awareness but it's not as if that's the focus the focus is not inwardly to outwardly it's outwardly and then inwardly so it almost feels smothering to be an individual in this system because it wasn't planned around a person an in a single person it was only planned around a, like a collective i guess the collective growth and so then as like as like an individual you have things like a transport system like roads that have been designed that's as a person you have to have a car you have no choice in having a car because if you don't it's basically like you're stranded on an island so it wasn't planned for a person it's kind of like they'll have to make do with what's in the system the system will provide for them it's like where's the humanity in this design there's none maybe a little bit <laughs> is a little bit not enough i don't think so i want to just i know that i have been um putting down the negatives and positives but i think oops All right, what do I see in the food system? Am I just doing the same thing that I did before? What would I want to see? Maybe that's where I should start. The food system. Okay. I want to start with the output. I want to start thinking about how an individual would move around in the system. And then move further out and design the laws that will create that output so with food food is grown locally I'm trying to think of how the body uses food. It does have a transportation system of food. I definitely think that the design in general needs to be more cellular. Efficient, self-sufficient blocks rather than a disjointed open system so when it comes to food it needs to be grown okay this is where the idea of those farms, those indoor farms come into ha into in come in handy <laughs> because then you just need a building that is growing the vegetables and fruits. I'm not sure if fruits has reached that progression yet, but you just need when when you can control the climate, you can grow the food that's needed for the cell
So, it, it comes down to using time more efficiently as well as humans, as individuals. Like, the way that we have these giant factory farms right now, it becomes so cruel because you have it so centralized. This pr food production is so put into one area, which means that that'll generate a lot of waste in that area. That will, you know, just the management of that amount of animals, you'll definitely start to slip up. And I feel very similarly about a lot of the different systems. It's not utilizing the human mind as an individual, as a point of perception to even um, judge morality or judge uh, or to just calculate. It's so random instead of using people's own ability to see if they have enough food for the amount of people around them. I guess using people as more pieces of a network than just assuming that there are these stupid points that need to be taken care of. Like, each person is very intelligent and we can utilize that better. So, yeah, I think that's when it comes to food. I feel like I need to draw. <laughs> okay. Fun to be working on the building stuff again. I guess it's just gonna loop around and around and around. Work on my ideas, study a bunch, work on my ideas, study a bunch. Uh, for years and years and years. <laughs> um, great. But the problem with this is that it like makes a million things, so let me get paints. Okay, we got food. I'd like to move out oh, there. So right now we kind of have like this like farms. Okay. Um, how should I draw this top down? We have these huge farms. You know? And then we have like the city which means that you have to control this huge environment um which means you have to basically kill everything in the area which will affect the soil quality over time it also means that you'll have to harvest huge amounts at a time and yeah just the work that needs to go into managing these clusters of resource production and then logistically to transport it into the city and that's not even to get into the whole idea of then we then we package it as well like packaging is such an open system as well we say that it's pollution but it's like but we haven't designed it so that you reuse a bottle, you know. We only need, you only need one, oh, can you see? <laughs> no. You only need one glass jar and you can reuse it. But because everything is an open system, it just produces with no idea of how, where its stuff will end up. Because that's not part of the design. 
so as much as we can say coca-cola is evil for the production of bottles it's like i don't see that because they're just they're literally following the rules that we've created and we haven't made it so that you have to have a closed system of of packaging it's it's that's what we need to think about so this is kind of how it is now let's let's get this this is sweet <laughs> Actually, I think I can draw the farms better. <laughs> Excuse me. It also means that you have to water these huge fields. Uh, that should be fine. Farms. And then it doesn't even go to the city. It goes... I guess this is the idea of tertiary... Is it tertiary? Secondary, tertiary... I can't remember. But then you have the mill. Do -do 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 -do. I oh, drew it nicely. <laughs> it's Courage the Cowardly Dog's house, you guys. Um, this is Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> um, and then you have only two... Uh, not even. Then it's factories. To create complex and like with some things it's hard to get away from this because bread is really complicated to make and then after that you have another one another factory which is like packaging or maybe just product Yes, this is this is better to look at what we actually have. Let's draw the whole of society <laughs> and figure out where we can make it more efficient. I think that's a good place to start. Okay. Um. No, that's fine. And then we got after that. Um, then we got stores still. So then we also spent a lot of our time literally putting things on shelves just to take them off of shelves. <laughs> oh, the camera is acting strange. Stop that camera. Stop it, Mr. FBI man. You can watch, but don't interrupt. That's rude. Okay, then you got stores. Then after that, you got the houses. Um, but it went from also like to keep in mind just how the product sort of, you know, so it was harvested here. No, it is harvested like this. Okay, and then over here it was turned to this, and then over here it was, oh uh, what, oh I don't have to, is this part of the factory? I suppose then it was turned into big things of, of flour, because then that's like wholesale. And then you have the product which is like little ones. Then you have the stores, which holds the little ones. And then you have the house, which only gets one. So there's like, um... 
I guess what I would want to do is have an idea. Okay, we've got the houses. How many people are there? And then you got tiny farms. Um, but indoor greenhouses. Controlled weather. Great. Um, so, and then, by the houses you have the place where you eat. But I suppose then you still need, you still need to have... Um, you know, a processing plant, because... But, because it's a, it's a one system, it can just be all together. And... And there won't be a product. It'll just have... Storage, I suppose. Then we have the kitchen, <laughs> the place, the communal, like a restaurant really, because something that really bothers me is that everyone is cooking next to each other. <laughs> what a waste of time and energy. First of all, we've designed it so that it assumes everybody's good at cooking. Everyone should be good at cooking. Everyone has a passion for cooking. Everyone has the time available to cook. And yeah, because that didn't work out, you know, once women entered the workforce and stopped being essentially... I don't want to say the S word, but <laughs> a little bit. But then now we have takeaway instead of that because it was clearly impossible. But don't worry, because our system is basically just giant problem management it's good that there's this giant problem of people don't have enough time to cook for themselves don't have enough energy to cook for themselves don't have enough knowledge don't have enough passion so now you can buy food um but the problem is it's not very good food uh and so people are eating horrible food for themselves like we're not taking care of people and that's sad. So I'm going to call this the kitchen. <laughs> and it's obviously a place where people who like to cook, cook. You know? I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's so idealistic. Wait, I'll make it practical. Don't worry. So, like that. But it calculates, because it's a closed... Okay, then the kitchen has to give the storage back to the factory. The storage. That's supposed to be a jar. <laughs> um, or... Oh, wait, it's already there. So it just has to go, like, back there. Okay, so... Yes, the, you only need one storage. And and then you can have um, animals as well. But not to a crazy degree where there's, like, 50 billion pigs. Because that is really cruel. And just... Um, not very effective because if there's the amount of animals that is needed is close to the amount of people, it means that we can more properly take care of them. They look more like dinosaurs, honestly. Um, the food factory. I need to add some brown and stuff so that it looks like cows. 
<laughs> These are cows, okay? Trust me. Um, but sure. We don't have to feel bad about torturing animals. We can use their feces to actually help the plants. And yeah, with the amounts of houses in mind as well, we don't have to overbreed them and let meat go to waste and they won't be spreading diseases because of the close proximity next to one another. Okay, um, so there'll probably be more more than this, but that's the idea, is that it's got the amounts of people in mind. Um... Yeah. That's pretty much it. It's a closed system. How much resources do we need? The kitchen will know. That's it. <laughs> Instead of all of that. Because then, you know, we didn't even put in here all of the waste that goes on. Because everyone is using tiny amounts of food and they, they have to calculate it themselves. For, you know, you have to, like think about like one lettuce how much is that going to last me when am i going to eat salad like you have to think about all this stuff and not to mention the amount of electricity that you need in order to have a fridge in every single home just so that we can all cook separately and most people don't even utilize their fridge most of the time it's just this giant appliance that's there for show because they eat takeaway and sometimes they want to put their takeaway in the fridge <laughs> You know, and then you have this whole problem as well where people are like storing copious amounts of food in the freezer. Like wherever I go, I just see these overflowing freezers of food because everyone really is clinging to, there's so much instability that people are, are clinging onto resources. Um, and if they have the, 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 the money available, they'll buy like two chickens and then they'll just put one in the freeze, in the freezer. But that's wasting energy just to freeze a chicken because of insecurity. Like, and that's happening on a huge scale. Like, the compounding of this insecurity and the energy inefficiency is just, like, mind-blowing to me. So, yeah, I think that this is a better way. And then houses can be closer to Together, or at least there'd be more space for other things in your house because you wouldn't necessarily have a kitchen but for those people who want a kitchen there there can also be you know like um mini kitchen maybe you can get stuff from the kitchen and go home but it wouldn't have all of this packaging you could design it so that if you needed if you wanted it more individualistic and not to have the kitchen aspect, um, you know, kind of centralized, then you can give people sort of bottles that they have to refill. Um, and then we wouldn't have packaging waste. <laughs> like we have so much packaging waste and it's not going to stop because it's got open system. <laughs> so yeah. This is a good start, I think. I guess I need to write down and explain this. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a dump. Oh, and the kitchen can also be connected to the farm. Oh, yes, we can put we can put all of the leftovers into the soil and get healthy soil. Anywho, we don't do that. Six. This is a dump. Uh One, 
Oh, that one just makes me so much happier. <laughs> it's a closed system. It's a closed system. I love it. Oh, it's so efficient. It's so much more efficient. We'll work out the semantics once we have what we need, what we what will be better. Oh, that's very relieving. <laughs> Oh, I also need to just put one, like, oh, five, five, six, just because it goes back. Oh, and seven, it goes back. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you know how happy this makes me? <laughs> this makes me so happy. Okay. Um. I just say done. Um. Just a brief reminder of my ex there. <laughs> that was painful. Um, farms. Okay, so open food system. System design. Design. Closed. Oh, yes, no waste. Woo! <laughs> I just need to look at this for a second, the void. <laughs> It's so wonderful. <laughs> I just want efficiency. I think it's missing the waste management wait soil production soil production plants yeah doesn't go to the farm
<laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And the butchery. You'll have lots of leftover. Oh, then we got. We got the skin of the animals, which can be used in clothes production. So that needs to go to clothes production. What about the bones? That... That can be used... I think that they make, like, glue and stuff. <laughs> but I'm not too sure, actually. Okay, let's focus on food for now. Because farm clothing definitely goes next to this because, you know, sheep gonna be by the farms as well. Alright, but I think that's enough for today. I'll continue on this tomorrow to label everything and go on to the next one, which is apparently drugs. <laughs> I guess it's medicine. That's also grown a lot of it in... Maybe I don't know enough about medicine just yet. Maybe I should actually... Okay. I'm not gonna do all of them now. Let's just see. This is gonna be... Open versus closed system. And I need to explore that further. This is an example. Because I need to study more before I can... Get to... Designing those other ones effectively. But anyway, thanks for watching the- Oh wait, I'm gonna play my game. I'm gonna play my game, hold on. Alright. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Let's just turn this down just in case. I love opening closed system. <laughs> That's exactly what we're missing. Because we produce so much waste. Even with the satellites yesterday, the void. Oh my goodness. It's just an open system. So then, there's no regulation. Do you? I'm definitely going to change the world, the void. One day at a time. What do you think of this turning one? It's very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's a diagonal one. I remember. Oh man, I love this game. Easy peasy. Three stars, baby. I've almost... How much do I need for a skin? My little cousin designed this one. <laughs> um, 200. Oh, I want this one though. I want a gold skin. 500. Alright, I'll get it. That's a deal. Do you like his hats? It's because I love Christmas so much. 
Anywho, thanks for watching the void. I hope that you have a lovely day going forward. Rem oh! <laughs> Remember not to be too hard on yourself. Remember it's not your fault. You're trying your best. I know you're trying your best. It's a bad order living in. So yeah, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Bye!